I don't know how you feel, but I think I learn so much. And um, another thing I learn is that uh, people who are dealing with getting the, getting the documentaries to the audiences, they are almost all of them female. So it's a female thing, huh? Uh, and um, I think that's good. I was uh, t talking to Maya the other night and she said, ah, it's because uh, women are more organized and more precise and, and uh, I'm not sure about that, but um, anyway, that's how the situation is and I, I think it's very good. I'm very impressed by all these very professional presentations um, on PowerPoint with clips and so on. It's very, very, very stimulating. Let me, let me just say one thing that uh, everything here, everything you have been saying, commenting on, has been filmed. And one or two months, Victor will put it online. He did that for the conference three years ago, and it will also happen here, so more people can uh, share what has happened here. And now to Flahatiana, and I think it's very good that we have the name Flaherty here, because I remember that Flaherty was the person who said, many, many years ago, of course, in the twenties probably, he said, when it is possible for a person to see a film quite as easy as it is to get access, to get hold of a book, then we've won the battle. That's what he said. And I think we are in that situation now, with all these possibilities, technical possibilities. So, uh, welcome to Pavel from Flahatiana. Give him a warm hand. Thank you very much. Well, actually, I don't want to talk about Flahatiana at the moment. Flahatiana it's a good product, it's a good working product of our hard work. We just heard the story about Docker, wonderful story. And they also had a long path and got the project on. But we also have differences. I just want to tell you first where we arrived, what we achieved, and then I'm going to go back and explain every decision made. So in 19... 87, one of the first independent film studios appeared in Russia. Five people, we got together, bought the equipment, and started working at the beginning of the 1990s. We had about six or seven feature films. Banks were giving us money, private sponsors were giving us money, because that was the time of naive capitalism. Of course, that was uh, money laundering, the dirty money that we got from them. But nevertheless, we made the films. And a lot of people, a lot of money went through the studios that we created. So we could enjoy the result. It was very, uh, very active time. I also made my presence on that market. I made a film. I had only one task, make money, because it was during the Soviet time, I wanted to make money and build a film studios. And I think it's better to build a film studios than build a plant. I mean, at least more beautiful. You remember what happened in 1991? So the release of my film started at the beginning of the 1992. Um, it coincided with the inflation. <laughs> Even though the film got 4 million viewers, those 4 million rubles meant nothing in the times. But then we started thinking what to do next. I understood that working in the cinema is, I mean, doesn't have too many perspectives. But nevertheless, once when I was in Perm, on the street, that's my native town, I saw my colleague that just won the Upper House Award. And he had 10,000 Deutsche Marks. That was a lot, huge money in the times. 
and he was acting like a new Russian because he had so much money. The only difference is that he came to watch, to make the new film in Perm, unlike the new Russians. And I was quite impressed by him. I worked with him for five years and made several documentary films. We made an application for the film. It was, if you remember, at the beginning of 1990s and the end of 1980s, it was quite interesting time for the documentary films. So I made the films and I got the biography as a director. I got the prizes in Locarno, for example, and the other festivals. And little by little, I was convinced. I was convinced that whatever the festival is, whatever award you get, this is nothing. That means nothing on your own street, in your own apartment, in your own hometown. Maybe your wife would respect you more. That means a lot. But it's not enough for any social change. And I was really hoping for social change. So we started. We started. We started an activity, and in the year 1995, we created a film festival, Flartiana. It was born, of course, in the kitchen, during the discussions, as usual. And so since 1995 till 2006, we existed like a biennale. We found some money. For example, Soros Fund gave us some money, was helping us, actually. In 2006, we had a new governor. And he said, you know, enough. Think how to make a good festival. And we said, OK, give us money and we'll make a good one. And since 2006, we have an annual film festival and we have an annual competition and international jury. But at the same time, we started attract attracting the audience. Because we put a lot of we put a lot of effort and money in the advertising, so things started moving. Every year the audience is growing. This year, yesterday the festival was over. We have more than thirteen thousand viewers, spectators, and our festival lasted a week. I'll show you um, how our festival looks like. You know the old Russian casa parochets. Inside, it's a big, bigger than outside. We're still working on the new pavilions for the festival, but well, ov overall seating is around 600 seats for the festival. We also have other venues for the festival. Well, what we realized little by little is that for the documentary film, after the screening, it's very important. And we realized that in year um, 98, after you watch the documentary film, it's important to talk about it. So, and then I had my next thought, we need to move to the university to talk about the films. And that was a great thought. Because we started working with the universities. We found very understanding people, both among the educators and among the students. And now this idea of uh, celebrating the 10th anniversary, and we have no problem working with the universities. Now, during the festival, we have two departments of the university, a School of Philosophy and School of Sociology and Philology. The students are writing essays dedicated to the documentary films. They're watching the film, but there are a lot of students watching that film. The different years, different majors of students. They choose a film, watch the film together, and then they write an essay. It's like an Oxford system. Uh, 
the president of our classical university is a friend of president of Oxford University. Perim and Oxford are sister cities, so that's why we got the system from them. That's just one of the one of the nuances that we got from Oxford. That's about a university release of documentary films. Now I'm going to talk about the year 2006. That was a very important year for us. First, because we started to have a really important film festival as a festival, not as a seminar. In the year 2006, I got an offer to become a director of this movie theater called Premier. It's very interesting. This, this movie theater is a remnant of the Soviet film center. That's a very interesting Soviet concept. In every region of the Soviet Union, they had the uh, film distribution bureau, and they were working with logistics. I mean, editing too, but they're mostly working with the logistics. It's a huge logistics center. They were sorting the copies of movies and sending all over the country. And in Perm, Perm region, there were 35,000 um, venues where they could show the films. I mean, that's a really good level. We, right now, we cannot even um, be close to that approach. If we had so many venues now in Perm nowadays, then perhaps the movies, documentary films we're making in uh, Perm now would be bringing even the profit. I mean, that would be really great to, really easy to screen the film, and that would bring the profit, the same profit as the Soviet power was enjoying from screening the films, because they had a huge audience. I don't know how much, um, how many, how much audience did the film The Ordinary Fascism got, but we're still showing that film, and still the number of viewers, numbers, members of the audience is growing. So that system of the Soviet screening, of course, as you know, in the year 91, vanished. I mean, it's a sad story with the year 1991 anyway. I'm sure you guys know that. There was a so-called wave of freedom and lack of any semantics, lack of any tasks. And that um, general idea, of course, unfortunately, got the uh, uh, film industry as well. But anyway, now I got this movie theater that was remnants of this great Soviet screening mechanism. Again, if that mechanism was only working now still, if we could use it, that would be great. But, you know, we have technological revolution again. There is no more film, a 16 millimeter film. Now we have a different format. But that costs a lot. So for some village movie theater, it would be this, uh, would cost three million rubles, would be like buying a battleship. But I'm telling you just technical parameters. But the most important thing is not the parameters, but rather that during the festivals, I saw the audience that was asking the same question. Where can we watch those movies? Why can't we see those films anywhere? And I'm a director who was very interested, really, why do we make good films and the audience cannot watch them? I was not the only person thinking about that. I'm sure all the other directors were also touched by the question. We started thinking seriously, if we don't resolve that issue, at least in Perm region. Nobody's going to resolve that issue for us. 
so I was very happy to get that project. I became a director general of that movie theater. I understood what it is. I understand what could be made in terms of screening. So we had the venue in the downtown Perm and we started working. Luckily it still survived, so... So what we have now, we have six rooms for screening, two DCP and four DVD for public screening. We also have film, a projector and film. We have about 9,000 copies left. The films that's mostly Soviet classics and um, foreign classics because in the Soviet times all the regional movie centers got those repertoire of films. And a lot of the times these copies were burnt. Sometimes they were just destroyed or sold. So there was nobody from the film, no, no director, no producer who would say, stop, don't destroy the old films, the classic films. But in those times, people were worried only about money. But Irina and myself, uh, Dr. Irina and myself are so romantic that we uh, saved the, the films, the 9,000 copies. What can I say about this movie theater premiere that is existing now? They're screening five documentary films. It doesn't mean that just once or twice per day, maybe three days in a week or one day in a week. But the important thing, it's a regular screening of documentary film. Um, the tickets are very cheap. So the profit is like 10, 15,000 rubles a month. So it's I mean, it's nothing. But it's a chance for the audience to watch documentary film. We understand that cinema is a unique artifact. It's a dialogue platform, dialogue history, where the audience is a communicator and communicating with what's happening on the screen. And depending uh, which topic is interesting for the audience, we were, cho we were choosing, selecting the films that would fit the audience. For example, now at the Flaertiana Festival, we had around 5,000 items. That's throughout the history of existing at Flaertiana. And these are films from different countries, dedicated to different topics, done with different, by different people to any problem of any age group, you can select a good film to prompt that person for a dialogue and to discuss that person's problem with him or her. Because psychologically, that's what's happening. A person watches the film discussing the problems of the protagonism, protagonists with a moderator. He or she discusses the issues of protagonists, but in the end he is discussing his own problems. And that's very important for teachers in every school, in every university. That's a very neat tool for educators. We have a small department where we have special specialists who are eager to talk to the audience. If schools are acting in a very efficient way to what we offer. Because that's a very cool subject to actually teach something in school, our films. You know the school system. The school doesn't really teach much. For example, I have a story. The girl comes to a seventh grade 
and is beaten and humiliated by her classmates. So we show the film Chuchula or Scarecrow. The kids watch that film, Scarecrow, and they make conclusions, they discuss. We have also a very um, good film about love that you guys might know. There was one person making an amateur film about love and the story about a boy and girl. The girl doesn't have hands, the boy almost doesn't have legs, but it's a beautiful love story, how they understand love, what love is, and that is really an amazing film. And the shock that the audience gets from viewing that movie gives us a chance to later on make a good dialogue, productive dialogue about love. And that's a neat tool for educators. And before that, um, parents were really reluctant to our initiative. They're saying, well, why are our kids watching movies at school? Now they understand that this film prompted a discussion, a very productive discussion and a very needed discussion. And then later on, parents even started saying, well, we also have this and this problem. Can you also show us a movie so we can have a dialogue? And we say, okay, we'll show you the movie. Educators also have their own problems. They were also talking to us, they were saying, well, we have a problem. Can we also watch the film that would prompt a discussion? And you know the famous triangle, the students, educators, and parents. Well, this triangle started working, trying to understand what's happening. And our films, our screenings, even happened to try to address the problem of this triangle itself. We once got a small grant, to, small grant, 200,000 rubles, and different communities. Each communities of this triangle were making the movie about each other. Students were making films about parents and educators. Educators were making a film about the students. And it was really interesting in the end. It was very not professional filmmaking, but the result was amazing in that school. The participants of our project didn't even understand the scope of their problems before they made a movie. So this is a neat technology, it's a neat tool to make a film and then discuss. And that's perhaps the main direction of our work in the field of preparing the specialists, the so-called specialists of um, making the films. And I think the main education they get in the Flyer Tiana Festival, when they make the films in the contact with us, with the directors, with the kids, some of those students become later on professional directors of the documentary films of a rather good level. One of my former students in the program got three prizes for the best debut in different film festivals in Russia. And then one second year student got a prize in our festival in the student competition. It all depends on the talent and on the tendency of a person. But you all understand that the most important thing in the film is not important. Film is not the most important, but the dialogue that follows the film. At present, um, we're seeing some changes in the pedagogical university as they made uh, a great auditorium there and great projection facilities. Um, so we will have the pedagogical university, the teaching university joining us. So the system of professional training, the system of uh, the educational systems that used to be absent. Uh, so the training system for people who will be discussing films um, is something new to us, and this is what, what we are doing. Uh, and this is one of the key successes of Flight Ayana, because Every year, 
we see um, around um, 18,000 viewers um, watching our films in the Perm Cry alone. One of the libraries in our region got a grant, uh, got some funding, state funding, to uh, to build an auditorium with decent um, uh, screening facilities. For, um, and of course, the the people who the people who work there in libraries, in museums, at schools, we organize. Uh, training courses for them uh, where uh, different methods um, are used, different methods are applied, how to um, how to analyze um, films, how to appreciate them, how to make them. And um, of course, um, of course, we um, uh, documentary people um, um, are quite happy that um, Flautiano exists um, and it initiates many young artists into um, our film and uh, into our field. And uh, I think what is happening to Sweden uh, and what Maya has told us today in her beautiful presentation is absolutely great. Um, and we are, well, we're developing um, something similar ourselves, um, the system of clubs. Um, I would like to show you uh, very briefly. Um, this is our schedule for, for today. Cartoons, documentary films. The Sea on Fire, Snowden. Arctic is a great. Just three, uh, this is the TV guide. So just the just three documentaries that we have on show. Um, we are working with our corporate holders, and we will be uh, asking them to do Echo Flautiana, uh, which we're going to take around uh, in the uh, across the Russian Federation because our partners are deeply interested in what is happening um, at the festival. These are our clubs. The number of the clubs is dependent on the number of people uh, and the kind of people that, um, that emerge, that volunteer to run this work. Um, of course, the, uh, most of the films that, show, uh, that are shown are classical and very often they um, get cunning and say, um, OK, we're getting together to watch this and that film. We won't be able to, uh, we won't be able to, uh, to show you the whole of the film, but please look it up online and watch it, uh, and then come to discuss. Uh, so that, uh, this is cheating, this is bluffing, but this is what they do. And um, this year we um, experimented a bit and um, uh, organized um, uh, and organized a filmmaking project in a summer camp for children. So we had literally 180 children making films. And uh, see, uh, parents were really happy. Uh, they paid us maybe the best compliments that uh, we uh, received in 10, 20 years. Because uh, one of the moms um, an, um, uh, eventually um, understood that uh, her son um, stopped um, spending all of his free time online and um, sort of unclamped and started making films and started communicating and um, socialized, which made us blissfully happy. Um, so these social practices, um, of course, are highly significant. I don't know how far we have gone. Uh, and um, Moscow, of course, is a, um, is a different story from Perm, and um, St. Petersburg is a different story. But for us, uh, it's, um, it's very focused. It's concentrated in one space and in one moment. Um, and everybody knows it, so we don't have to uh, spend more time advertising. 
And uh, so people know that we are there, so people know that uh, whenever they come, they will be able to select something that is interesting for them. And uh, we show about 150 uh, 50, uh, 50 films per year. Uh, the, uh, fly, uh, the echo of Fly Tiana um, is um, uh, also um, a great project uh, where we show Fly Tiana films. So if you understand um, films and if you love films, um, this is a place to go. Uh, so um, as far as um, uh, as far as flight, um, we have uh, we are working to full capacities. Uh, uh, our our product is commercial. Uh, so f children's films are non-commercial, of course. But um, this is this is our story. This is something that I wanted to tell you about Perm and about our area. The main thing is that it's um, it's a state-controlled, government-controlled center, uh, one of the few. Uh, the other thing, the other thing is that um, people don't go there for uh, for big money, for big bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, over here, who wants to ask a question? Uh, and. Uh, Please be, don't be so long as you were before. Is that possible? Not so long. Павел, спасибо вам огромное за ваше выступление. Paul, thank you very much for your presentation. I uh, wanted to add something and maybe ask a question then. I wanted to comment on my part to um, our international colleagues that Russia is um, works on a model of the center, one center, and the regions. So there is one center, and there are many regions. And uh, in the people in the regions are really very, very, very um, strong. They are very interesting and. They're ambitious. They want more. Uh, I um, was born outside of Moscow. I came to Moscow when uh, when I was mature enough. And uh, Pavel is saying that, um, uh, and in the regions, uh, there are fewer opportunities to get access to uh, quality um, filmmaking education. So uh, the people living in the regions um, do not look at the center as a reference for them. So, so when you want, uh, if you want to self-educate, you look at what is best there is in the world because they sincerely believe some, um, this will help them in the future. For example, they can move to the center, they can move to Moscow and um, assert themselves, realize themselves. And I know it for, for sure because uh, I've gone through it. I come from Smolensk and there is a, it's a small town, there is no infrastructure to get education. And what you have, all you have is the internet, the experience, uh, how you communi communicate with other people. And this is how you develop. This is your way of development. And then the next story that happens is um, because Russia is such a huge country, there aren't too many people who um, are interested in uh, going to Moscow. There are many more of those who want to stay on and do their stuff and do their job. And I now think, um, uh, I sincerely respect you, Paul, for it. You talked about your education system, and I think that you, uh, at some point, you were looking for and you tried to start uh, your own, um, to start your own system, to start your own um, way out from uh, this difficult situation, because you need to live on 
uh, you need to earn. There is a large number um, of people around you, and um, you could have been um, you could have been a business manager or um, a factory director who um, was looking for uh, ways to save, to rescue uh, his business, to rescue his business from um, uh, from bankruptcy. Um, yeah, well, uh, it's uh, uh, yes. You were looking for you were looking for some ways out of the situation. You could have gone into um, uh, in, uh, into business, and uh, there were uh, many lucrative things happening there. Uh, but you didn't. You you carried on doing your good work, and there are many people like you. And uh, when we were talking that, um, okay, so everything is bad, everything is doom and gloom, and um, uh, you um, um, sometimes felt very disappointed. Uh, no, Russia is not like that. Russia is like Paul. Um, uh, I uh, recently met a boy uh, who said that I come from um, I come from a small town. I want to build a cinema there, um, and this is something really good. Um, the uh, the guy isn't happy about something, and he's looking for ways to overcome um, this difficulty. Uh, so I think we have to give a round of applause to Paul. No, not uh, t a round of applause to Paul to say him good uh, to say goodbye. No, don't 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 say goodbye. Not yet. I'm not dying yet. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Maybe some other person can can also give me the answer. Is film education? Now I understand what you're doing is that you show films and the students are talking about the subject of the film. But the film uh, education, how to read a film and analyze a film, is that on the curriculum in in Russian schools or or in university? Do you know that, Paul? Uh, um, there is the um, there is the uh, gig uh, the um, the state institute for cinematography in Moscow. There is. Uh, um, uh, not in universities. Not in universities. There are some. Um, there are some, uh, some universities uh, giving lectures in the history of cinema, but this is uh, this isn't serious. This isn't serious. This isn't very professional. No? Yet. Okay. Paul, I wanted to ask you, do you um, so do you sell do you sell tickets uh, through cinemas uh, for commercial screenings? Um, yes, well, uh, we offer tickets for screenings uh, in the cinema clubs as well uh, because we need it. Uh, because uh, the state gives some money for us to um, maintain this building, but uh, this isn't enough. So, um, so you sell tickets? Yes, we sell tickets, um, and we sometimes get grants. We sometimes get state funding. Uh, what about uh, what about the the cinema clubs? Are they paid? Uh, are they paid? Well, um, the directors of cinema clubs are paid, of course, for their job. Um, how about the parents of the children who uh, um, who take their kids there? They buy tickets. You don't have a system. Um, you don't have a system whereby um, okay, uh, you buy a season ticket. Um, for several screenings. Uh, well, it depends on the popularity of, uh, um, of the films that we are showing. The more subtle, the more sophisticated the audience is, uh, the more avid they are, the, the more eager they are to, to, watch, to watch films. And this is highly, it's highly important to uh, correctly diagnose the viewer. Uh, like, for example, uh, if uh, junior school students, um, uh, they had this the, the problem that one of the uh, one of the girls uh, took a rat into class. Well, now that, that is the problem. That is our view. This is something that we need to remember. Uh, so uh, as far as the uh, universities are concerned, you don't charge the university students. No, we don't. Um, I don't know about uh, about you, but uh, in most uh, film schools um, 
cinemas calls um, are very popular. They are like clubs where uh, parents pay for uh, for classes for their children. Yes, we do, we do that. We do that. Uh, we do say. Um, uh, um, um, we had the summer project of ours whereby we had uh, 180 children uh, making films. Um, the parents are not ripe enough to say, uh, "Hi guys, we want to um, we want to pay for this or that person who uh, will teach at your school." In Moscow, no, we um, uh, we have a different situation um, because in Moscow the parents are prepared to pay; uh, they are prepared to get their children schooled in um, animated films, in animation uh, or uh, drama, etc., etc. But uh, so far, you don't have plans to create something like that. Uh, yes, we do. This is one of the uh, one of the main um, directions uh, of our work. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, I have worked. I have mentioned that I've worked in Kazakhstan for a long time, and we try to organizing festivals and screenings there. Uh, my personal ex uh, experience uh, is enthusiasm is fantastic. That's a good thing to have. But unfortunately, in our countries. Uh, uh, the country is an, uh, undergoing an economic crisis. Uh, people simply have no money. Uh, when I was talking to people, uh, said uh, who um, um, uh, they were saying, um, I'm not going to spend that 100 rubles, uh, which is. Uh, uh, I'm not go going to uh, to pay that a uh, small amount of money to for cinema. I'm going to spend it on buying something useful. Or I'm going to spend 100, uh, 100 rubles um, getting a beer. Um, but uh, so this is reality. Uh, people give up going to uh, cinemas or attending theaters. We're not talking about Moscow or Saint, Pe or Saint Petersburg because they are. Um, the situation is very different from the national average there. I don't even see uh, people coming to get education uh, here, and it hurts me to see this fantastic conference with such a small number of people uh, attending. No, everything depends on how long you have been doing that. Um, but um, uh, there, there are many people who uh, are ready to see Flyotiana and uh, our. Um, who uh, our auditoriums are working to capacity. We have uh, 85,000 uh, um, viewers per year in our small cinema. So uh, the people are ready to watch, the people are ready to pay, but uh, they need to be shown how and where uh, you can do that. They need to be trained, they need to be taught. Um, I'm sorry, microphone. Yes, system, uh, systemic work, systematic work. This is uh, this is key. It is key. First of all, for those, uh, I understand that uh, there are many people who uh, know about filmmaking. Uh, some people who don't. Uh, I want to make a comment that the Florentina Festival. Um, is practically a divine phenomenon for the Russian filmmakers. Uh, it's a dream of many uh, documentary uh, filmmakers, and of course, uh, uh, of course, uh, the people that you see here are project leaders. Uh, it's a practical. It's uh, it's a practical conference. So a practical conference is for um, people who actually uh, can uh, um, adopt some approaches and uh, apply it to a practical activity. Uh, when I started working in the documentary films, um, the first. 
the first um, presentation that uh, uh, I made was the uh, d discovery of the resource potential of documentary cinema in Saint Petersburg. I have seen people doing all kinds of uh, all kinds of documentaries, such as nature or history, but media pedagogics uh, is a new direction that you started, and it was a surprise for me that it have, uh, that it exists. And uh, the uh, systematizing uh, cinema clubs, uh, bringing them into a system is a great thing to do. So thank you for doing that. I would like to talk to you um, sometime later. Yes. Uh, I wanted to say the following thing. The local government, cry local government. Uh, provides uh, 13 million rubles per year to cover for uh, all kinds of services such as cleaning, including cleaning and uh, uh, restoration, maintenance works, etc., etc. And um, also we work, uh, uh, we um, obtain uh, funding from uh, a number of other sources. Uh, we're not uh, entirely reliant on the federal money. Uh, we apply for uh, funding, we apply for grants, but but we also earn about 12 million selling tickets uh, and grants. In the old days, festivals were for the happy few, and uh, nowadays, like what you are saying, and Irina and other people, festivals are all the year round, and they are doing a lot of of film political things like you are doing. Thank you very much for your speech and for being here, Pavel. Thank you.